I love my coffee, but when it comes down to fat burning, undeniably green tea is epic. And it's because it has properties outside of just caffeine and polyphenols. It has unique properties, unique catechins that actually do really cool things. So we're gonna break down the seven ways that green tea truly helps you burn fat. And this is all scientific stuff. This isn't just weird random science out there. This is good, legitimate scientific literature broken down into an easy digestible form for you. Hey, I wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications. So we've got videos coming out just about every single day nowadays. So you never wanna miss a beat, never wanna miss a fat burning opportunity. So let's go ahead and let's dive into number one so that I can be cognizant of your time. All right, caffeine. Obviously this is in coffee too, but in green tea we still have to mention it because it does play a big role in fat burning. Okay, it promotes norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is very big when it comes down to fat burning. A little bit more on that later. But it's a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Now, again, big fancy words that I always throw around to sound smart, right? The reality is I just don't know how to summarize that. Phosphodiesterase inhibitors basically prevent the inactivation of something known as CAMP. Long story short, it blocks your body's enzyme that would normally block it from burning fat. Okay, so we have the ability to burn fat, but there's always going to be activity that stops that from occurring. Caffeine basically breaks down the blockade, so fat burning can turn on. Okay, this is called a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. So even though it's a fancy word, it's actually a pretty simple thing. All right, now let's go ahead and let's jump into number two, which is EGCG's effect on norepinephrine when it comes down to fat burning. Okay, so now we know that norepinephrine helps us burn fat, right? Okay, it's the catecholamine. It's, it's what is elevated when you work out, when your heart rate goes up, right? When you're nervous, when your heart rate goes up, or when you're fasting, when your heart rate goes up and you're a little bit stressed, you have norepinephrine and adrenaline. This burns fat. We only want it in small surges, though. We don't want it chronically elevated. Well, the interesting thing is EGCG, also known as epigallocatechin 3 gallate which is the main catechin that's in green tea, actually stops the breakdown of norepinephrine. Okay, so we have a surge of norepinephrine that occurs because we have the caffeine or just because we worked out or whatever, but EGCG actually stops the breakdown of it so it has a longer effect within our body. So that means rather than just having a quick surge of it, we get a little surge of it that lasts for a little bit longer, allowing fat to get mobilized that much better. You're not gonna get that with coffee. You're only getting that with green tea that has the EGCG in it. So it inhibits a specific enzyme known as catechol ol methyltransferase. Again, this enzyme would normally encourage the breakdown of norepinephrine. So right, whenever we produce norepinephrine, we have enzymatic activity that breaks it down, sort of dissolves it once it's released. Released, and then it breaks down. Well, basically, we're inhibiting this methyltransferase, so it's basically making it so that that enzyme doesn't break it down as fast, so it's active in our body longer, which means we burn fat longer. Okay, the next thing we have to talk about is EGCG's effect on cholecystokinin, CCK. Okay, CCK is a satiety thing. It's all about making you feel satiated. So we have an increase in CCK, we have a subsequent decrease in hunger. It slows down our gut motility. So that's why like green tea between meals is great because it makes it so you don't get hungry. Okay, so not only are you getting the fat burning effects, but you're also getting the appetite suppressant effects, which is super, super powerful. In addition to doing that, it has a big effect on dopaminergenic activity within the brain, which means that you have bigger surges of dopamine that are more controlled. When you have caffeine from coffee, you have a big spike in dopamine, you feel really good, and then you come crashing down and you don't feel as good. With green tea, it's a little bit more controlled. You have a nice gentle bell curve of an increase of dopamine activity, which makes you feel quite a bit better. Okay, now we have to talk about what I think is the coolest one. Number four, it legitimately increases your overall resting metabolism. Meaning, green tea makes it so that your metabolism is just higher at rest. Okay, so the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published an interesting study. They took a look at 10 individuals. And these 10 individuals, they divided into two groups. They divided them into a caffeine plus EGCG group and then they divided them into a caffeine plus placebo group. What they wanted to measure was, okay, are all these fat burning effects of green tea actually coming from just the caffeine, or are we getting something else in addition to the caffeine? So that's why they took basically just straight caffeine with placebo and caffeine plus EGCG. Well, guess what? They measured their resting energy expenditure, and the group that ended up consuming the EGCG along with the caffeine had a 4% higher resting energy expenditure than the other group. It doesn't sound like much, but 4% of your overall metabolism just increased doing nothing. Okay, simply because you had some green tea, you had EGCG plus caffeine. So how does this work? 
Well, it works simply because it is a synergistic system between the two norepinephrine pathways that I talked about. So basically the caffeine is increasing the amount of epinephrine and the EGCG is making it so it doesn't break down as fast. So you have kind of a compound effect there, but it sort of magically creates a third avenue by the interaction in between. So think of it like this. It's like a freeway that's in two lanes and you have norepinephrine activity and you have these two lanes that are allowing you to burn fat, but then all of a sudden it opens up into a third lane and all of a sudden, boom, everything can go faster and move freely. I gotta give credit to someone in my office, Matt, who actually came up with that analogy. It's perfect. Okay, so now you just opened up the floodgates and it works well, right? Now, additionally, with this study, they found that there was a 40% increase in norepinephrine that was excreted through the urine. Now, what that means is that they were producing 40% more. So even though the metabolism only went up 4%, they had an increase of norepinephrine by 40%, which indicates they were probably burning a lot more fat within that increase in their metabolism. So now you're getting the point. The green tea is epic stuff compared to just coffee. Again, I love my coffee. Don't throw away your coffee, but sip on green tea. And by the way, if you're wondering which green tea to get, matcha is gonna be my go-to. So if you check out Yujido Matcha down below in the description, they have some really cool things. They have like these little single serve packets that taste really good, so they're sweet matcha, or they have all kinds of different ceremonial grade little jars and stuff like that that you can have around the house or bring with you. This is a 180 year old matcha company. So these people have it down, okay? They know exactly what to do. They know how to harvest this stuff so that it's clean and clear and doesn't have the oxidation that you're gonna get a lot of inexpensive matchas around. So I highly, highly recommend it. If you're someone that does intermittent fasting, you do keto, or you're just trying to get the benefits of green tea, but you don't wanna swing through Starbucks and get low quality green tea. So check them out down below in the description, special pricing for anybody that's watching this video, and you can check them out, but make sure you finish up this video first so you put your knowledge hat on before you just go willy-nilly spending money, right? Okay, the next thing we wanna talk about is L-theanine. Theanine is great when it comes to serotonin and dopamine. That is why you feel good when you drink green tea, point blank. You feel calm, you feel like you can take on the world and everything that comes at you just doesn't bother you. That's the theanine doing its thing, okay? It affects your dopamine and it affects your serotonin. So you feel nice and calm, which has an effect on fat burning, believe it or not, because when dopamine is elevated, you don't feel desire to go snack and munch. The other thing that's really cool about L-theanine and its effect on the brain is it increases our alpha waves, which makes us feel really calm and not have an appetite. Now, I say this with a grain of salt, the reason that nicotine actually makes it so that people don't have an appetite is because studies have shown that it increases the amount of alpha waves. You're basically just in a cool state. You don't feel like you really just need to eat. That's what people are talking about with kind of that nicotine, right? Well, you're getting the same alpha wave correlation, but you're getting it with theanine. Obviously a much safer way and much healthier for you long term, but it's also gonna make it so you're not hungry, but you're feeling kind of cool in the meantime. So I don't know. I think theanine's pretty awesome stuff. Now. Number six is also to do with theanine, and that's theanine's effect on nitric oxide. You're not gonna get this with coffee, right? Okay, so what theanine does in this case is it makes it so that our endothelial layer of our arteries, of our cells there, actually produce more nitric oxide. Nitric oxide sounds like something you just wanna take before a workout because it gives you a bigger pump, but no, that's like it's totally secondary, if not third or fourth, right? The major effect is it increases blood flow to increase nutrient delivery, but also increase fat burning. So now we've got this super highway of fat that's burning and we just basically made it the Autobahn instead. Like everything's just going really fast because there's more blood flow, more fat burning, more norepinephrine doing its thing. Lastly, the polyphenols in green tea are very powerful. Now coffee has polyphenols too, but green tea is usually cleaner in the way of polyphenols. This has an effect on the liver, okay? It increases glutathione peroxidase, which means that the liver is able to detox better, which means that you're able to process fats better. If you are in ketosis, for instance, your liver cannot be backed up. Your liver needs to be free and clear so it can package up fats into ketones and send them over to the cells for energy. So if your liver is clogged up, it's not gonna do you any good. So how about getting the fat burning effect from the norepinephrine and all that, getting everything mobilized, but then also clearing the path so that it can get manufactured into energy and you actually burn that fat and use it for energy rather than just feel sluggish all the time. So this breaks it down. Again, I love my coffee. Do not stop drinking coffee if you drink it, but have some green tea every now and then because honestly, it's gonna make a big difference. I promise you that. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.